Good morning and welcome to a, another episode here on Cruising Coasters. I'm Jeff and today we're at Warner Brothers Movie World in Australia and I cannot wait to be checking out DC Rivals Hypercoaster. One of the biggest reasons that we wanted to come to Australia was to come ride this ride and I cannot believe we're standing right in front of it right now. This pink track looks incredible. Like it just goes on forever and ever. Uh, I'm so excited that we're here. The ride has been testing so I know that it's going to, well, Hopefully it's going to open today, but at least it's been running a little bit this morning. And yeah, the park looked really incredible from outside of the park already. We do know that there are going to be a couple of rides that are closed. Um, unfortunately, after we had booked this trip, they announced that Superman was going to be closed as they finished the construction of the uh, Flash like half pipe coaster that they're putting in. And they also announced yesterday that the Justice League went down unexpectedly for maintenance. But I do think good props to Warner Brothers Movie World. Uh, they post that information on their website and they keep it up to date in real time, which is really nice and it helps you plan and kind of set expectations. But join me as we adventure into Warner Brothers Movie World. And right at 10 a.m. we were let into the park and there is quite the construction going on for the uh, Flash Speed Force, which is the new uh, Intamin coaster over there. And then the uh, Superman roller coaster is down for maintenance, as I mentioned. SNS Shot Tower also closed for maintenance, but that's okay. We are heading to this bad boy first, DC Rivals Hypercoaster. ride on DC Rivals Hypercoaster complete. We are on the second train of the day in the front row and it was an absolutely incredible ride, as good as people had made it out to be, if not maybe even a little bit better. I think I am slowly turning away from an Intamin fanboy to like whatever the mock equivalent of that might be because they are out here killing the game and they are making some incredible roller coasters. Oh my God, the airtime on the first airtime hill was absolutely phenomenal. I love the little like non-inverting loop that was obscene and then the ending bunny hills were so good and it reminded me a lot at the end uh, if it was like a smooth magnum xl 200 at cedar point and here's my hot take if they ever have to close that ride because of its end of its service life this is what they need to go with because they are doing the airtime right it's super comfortable trains uh, I, I absolutely loved it. I can't wait to go again. I think we're gonna try to do the backward seat at some point, but they are only running one seat, so we have to go one at a time. But I think we're still gonna do it. But we're gonna be riding this all day because it is absolutely incredible. Coaster number two of the day is going to be the Green Lantern Coaster. Green Lantern complete, and she was El Loco crazy. I sat on the back row left side seat, and it wasn't rattly or anything like that, but it was weird that like the, the train just kind of swayed like back and forth and made it kind of like bizarre the entire time. And the way that it catches the lift hill is so sudden and abrupt, it's actually kind of crazy. But other than that, it's a lot of fun. I enjoyed it a lot. It has like the same energy as like a 4D free spin coaster at like the Six Flags parks is kind of like what I would say. 
um, and then Josh rode in like a middle seat and he said it was actually quite smooth. So maybe just like, if you don't want to uh, uh, be like shattered around a little bit, just maybe go for a middle. But overall, it was fun. It was cute. I enjoyed it. Since we did the park's two coasters uh, of the three that are operating, we decided to come over to the little kids area and tackle Roadrunner Roller Coaster, which is the park's third roller coaster uh, that is open today. So normally the park would have three more coasters, Superman the Escape, the Flash uh, Intamin Half Pipe, and then also an indoor uh, Wild Mouse themed to Scooby-Doo. And all three of those things are unfortunately closed for refurbishment or being constructed. Um, but that's okay, because that means we have a visit to look forward to in the future, because Australia has been super kind to us so far, and I know that we will absolutely be back. And just like that, all three credits at this park are complete uh, with the Roadrunner roller coaster. And it was actually really cute. They had little sound effects playing up the lift hill. And then as you came off of the lift, there was like a little like explosion. So it was fun. They, they themed it really well. I thought it was nice, uh, very rattly. I think it's the older Vacoma track with newer Vacoma trains. So I'm gonna have to look into that because I think that's interesting. But yeah, it was fine. It was a typical uh, Vacoma roller skater. The app finally updated so that we were able to purchase the DC Rivals Hyper Coaster backwards seat. And it does look like we're gonna have to go one at a time because one seat is closed. That's totally fine. I'm thrilled that we're still able to do it. Hopefully, fingers crossed. I mean, we bought it, so hopefully it'll all work out. DC Rivals Hypercoaster backwards is absolutely unhinged. I actually don't know how that is legal. I thought the first drop was going to be like the scariest part and like the part that whipped you out the most. No, 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 my friend. Just wait until that like non-inverting loop was just absolutely batshit crazy. Like it was actually insane. And then the last like three bunny hills before the break run, backwards? insanity i that was amazing so it did cost 20 dollars per person to ride it backwards i 100 percent think it was worth it i wish it was like two rides backwards especially on a day where it's like no one is no one's paying to ride it backwards today and it's just kind of going empty i wish we could do it just one more time but like my heart says spending 80 dollars for us to ride it twice is just a little too much too too el loco if you will so we're gonna have to be good with that one ride, um, but it was absolutely amazing and I am so glad we got to do it. Not only does the park have three coasters that are just currently not operating, but they're also building three more roller coasters, like a dual family Vacoma boomerang, and then I think it's a Vacoma family flyer in this beautiful Wizard of Oz section. Josh and I were just talking about how much we're loving Australia. The people, the culture, everyone has been so friendly, so nice, and it's been so easy to get around. We're taking Ubers pretty much everywhere. The trains are really convenient. So I think a trip back to Australia is going to be in our future in the next couple of years, and we'll have at least six more credits to get at this park, which is just insane. We decided it was time for a spot of lunch. So we came into one of the very few places that was open. Nothing um, seems to be open today. It is a very slow day in the park, so I totally understand. So we're at Rick's, which has pizza, chicken fingers, uh, french fries, garlic knots, those type of things. And we are going to do two pizzas and kind of like split between them. Uh, they're like personal style pizzas, kind of like Blaze, if you've ever had Blaze pizza, something similar to that. Um, and then just a couple of drinks. So we'll let you know the quality of the food once it comes out. Friends, there has been a lapse in judgment because I thought that it would be smaller, um, but they're they're huge. Um, but they came out super fast. They're obviously very fresh, they're very hot, and they look absolutely delicious. So we'll definitely have way too much, but um, it looks amazing. Uh, we were walking past the uh, Scooby-Doo Spooky Coaster, which is closed for like almost two years that's gonna be closed while they do all of the upgrades inside of it. Um, I love the Scooby-Doo franchise, so I very much will look forward to coming down 
and checking this out when it reopens. And you may be wondering why there's so much investment going into this park right now. And I found out that they are basically beefing up all of their parks ahead of Sydney hosting the Olympics in a couple of years to help draw in some new visitors during that time. So super smart decision and excited to see all of those investments come to life. A little correction there of the information. It is not Sydney. Sydney has already hosted the Olympics. It's Brisbane that's actually hosting them, which makes a lot more sense because Brisbane is not that far away at all. It's like 30 minutes away or so. So it totally makes sense as to why they're going to try and draw in as many guests as possible. Um, also, the sun is crazy here today. It is so bright, so warm. You can just feel like the UV rays on your neck. So definitely wear your sunscreen while you're at the park. Up next on our agenda is the park's log flume called Wild West Falls. Heard a lot about it and I've heard it's supposed to be an absolutely incredible log flume. So I don't love water rides, but I do love a good log flume. Wild West Falls is complete and I can see why so many people think that's their favorite log flume. It was so much fun. It had this uh, cute little backward section. The drop on it was really good. You get the perfect amount of wet to like get cooled off but not completely drenched. We had a change in season uh, when we got off. It was like a little bit colder and rainy and now the sun is coming back out again. I don't think the weather really knows what it wants to do but the theming on that log flume is absolutely wonderful. And uh, like I said, I think it was just it was a really good long ride. The theming was great. Uh, Backward section was great, drop was great, it was great. Up next on our list is the Hollywood Stunt Driver Show. It's giving a lights, motors, action stunt show from Hollywood Studios back in the day. It looks almost like exactly like it. Just finished up the Hollywood Stunt Driver Show, which was really good. And about halfway through, it started pouring rain. I don't know if it really came through on the uh, on the camera, but it was pouring rain. And I thought it was great they could continue to the show. I was super impressed. I do think they slowed things down quite a bit after it started raining, but they still finished the show and props to them. Uh, but yeah, a really fun, entertaining show. My Apple Watch was definitely like, um, if you continue at this decibel, you'll never hear again. It was very loud. Um, but other than that, I think it was a little fun, great show. It took about 20, 25 minutes. And uh, yeah, we're gonna kind of wait out the rain, maybe get some re-rides on things and uh, see what else we uh, find in the park. While it's chucking it down, it is absolutely boring right now. If you can't tell, I am completely soaked. We decided to come into the Warner Brothers Showcase room, and right now they're doing like a special like Batman collection, and it looks to be really cool. I'm gonna show you guys around a little bit. It's a bunch of collection of like costumes and props and set pieces from actual Batman movies, and they told us we can't touch anything because these are like the genuine things that they used on the movies, which I think is really cool to see. From the uh, 1989 version of Batman, this is the uh, Michael Keaton 
outfit. And then the uh, overcoat that Jack Nicholson wore in the movie. It's so cool, they have like the giant duck from the 1992 movie. They even have the Batmobiles in here. So this one, it does say, is a replica from the 1992 movie, so it's not genuine. But it does look like this Bat missile is the authentic one. This is the Joker purple suit that Heath Ledger wore in the 2005 to 2012 Dark Knight films. And then it looks like a collection of Batman masks from all the different films. Really interesting. One thing I do find interesting about this park is there's not a lot of like flat rides. Like I think there's I, a few that we've seen. The one behind me right now is this like doomsday one that kind of like spins you around. Um, but that one is closed for maintenance. Then the SNS Shot Tower, that one was closed for annual maintenance too, I think for like the, the flash coaster that they're putting in. Um, so not many flat rides today that we're getting on, which is a bummer. some time to watch the little parade that came through and it was really cute. I enjoyed it. Um, nothing too crazy. I put some clips in there for you, but I like that the, it brought the energy to like the main street area for a little bit, which I think is really nice. So I did enjoy it. At this point, we've done pretty much everything we wanted to do today and we've got to see and experience a lot of the park, which we really, really have enjoyed. So I think it's time to get some re-rides on our two favorite coasters. DC Rivals, and a couple more on Green Lantern as well. This is a look at Superman, which again is closed. A little bummed that it is closed because it does look incredibly fun and I do love an Intamin accelerator coaster, but I know we'll be back and we'll be able to try it again in the future. DC Rivals in like the middle of the train and can confirm it's just as wild and crazy in the middle of the train as it was in the front and the back. 
It's just such a good coaster and so much fun. It's also so easy to marathon. Uh, there's basically no line uh, today. We can go on over and over again, and it's just such an enjoyable coaster, and I've really, really enjoyed it. So we're gonna keep riding uh, DC Rivals until Green Lantern is done for maintenance, and hoping we can sneak one more ride on that before we go for the evening. We have had such a fantastic day here at Warner Brothers Movie World in Australia, and I'm so glad we got to come check out this park. Um, admittedly, it is a lot smaller than I thought it would be, but in the future, I mean, it's going to be, I mean, pretty massive, right? Today they had three coasters that were operating. The next time we come, they could have up to nine, as long as everything is open, which I think would be really exciting. But I'm really, really happy that we got to come check out this park. DC Rivals Coaster was absolutely amazing, and I'm so glad we got to go on it. It might be a top 10 coaster for me, honestly. The airtime at the end of it is just absolutely wild. True ejecta airtime on such a fantastic coaster. Um, we didn't get one last ride on the Green Lantern, unfortunately. It did go down for the rest of the day, but we at least got it in earlier today, and as I mentioned earlier, we should be getting on another version of that later this year. So this is where the theme park day is going to end, but we are going to dinner tonight next door at something called the Australian Outback Spectacular. It looks very interesting, kind of kitschy, but I'm excited to see what it's about. It kind of looks like a mashup of like medieval times meets Australia. Um, it's a dinner show, so I figured since it's like next door to the park, you, you guys might want to check it out when, you're, when you come visit the park as well. So uh, we are going to be able to film. It will be able to show you a little bit about what dinner uh, looks like and if it's any good, if it's a good value. So if you're here just for the theme park content, this is where it ends. Have a great day. But if you're coming along for dinner with me at the Outback, um, the Australian Outback Spectacular, I'm gonna put in some clips of that now. We had about an hour of time to burn from the time that the park closed until time to check in for the Australian Outback Spectacular. We decided to uh, check out Top Golf, which was literally right next door to uh, Warner Brothers Movie World and next door on the other direction to where we needed to go for dinner. So enjoyed a nice little sunset. Uh, you literally could see DC Rivals. It was the coolest like little setting for a Top Golf. So enjoyed a little hour there and now it's time to go check in for dinner. And we've arrived at tonight's adventure. And we found we found another member of our party. Look who's joining us. Hi. Hi. I've just checked in and I will say I've never looked better. You get a complimentary hat. This is incredible already. I'm loving it. Before the uh, show starts, you can do a little bit of shopping and it also looks like they have a seating area and a bar where you can purchase some um, alcoholic or non-alcoholic beverages of your choice. We also found a couple of horses here. There's like three or four horses you can come look at and take a picture with for an additional fee if you'd like to. As we walked in, we had our first little dish served, like a little appetizer, and it is a goat feta tart with rocket and homemade pineapple chutney with roasted vegetables. So, I mean, it looks pretty good. It smells tasty. You're gonna have to do up how ridiculous I look with the hat. But not me being super impressed with the quality of the food. The vegetables are very fresh, very good, really well seasoned. Uh, the pineapple chutney that's on it as well is really tasty, flavorful, and it adds like a little bite of sweetness to it that I think the dish really needs. I really like this appetizer so far.
glimpse there of the Australian Outback Spectacular, which was absolutely spectacular and truly lived up to its name. The food was way exceeded expectations. The steak dinner was absolutely delicious and super tasty. And then the dessert was an apple pie, and that was absolutely amazing. That was so good. The show, it had everything. That show was wild. It was unhinged. It was Young and the Restless meets Medieval Times meets Dixie Stampede meets Living with the Land. Listen, there were horses. There were cows. There was a helicopter, it rained, it snowed, there was a wedding, it, it had everything you could ever want. It was an unhinged, wild, amazing, it was spectacular. That's all I have for it. If you guys have made it through this far in the video, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you guys give it a like, find the YouTube algorithm, uh, subscribe if you want to see more coaster or cruise content, more crazy content like this, because this was so fun. Uh, keep cruising and coasting. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.